Chapter 5 doesn't have a formal lecture at the time that I'm recording this video because Chapter 5 and Chapter 6, they are, they're pretty self-explanatory in my book. So we're going to talk about what the objectives are, and I'll take maybe a few minutes to talk about um, workspaces and panels and presets in Photoshop. Um, most of what you need to know about workspaces and panels and presets, Chapters 5 and 6, can be found directly in your textbook. I've also included a few videos um, that I found on Adobe.com that will help with those two subjects. And so our objectives for Chapter 5 workspaces are to be able to navigate workspace locations and define key terminology, to perform basic workspace adjustments, and to explore the different workspace uh, settings and preferences in Photoshop. And what I would like you to get from this chapter is I would like you to begin to feel more comfortable navigating around the workspace and clicking different things. Um, you should know where the tools are. You should know where your panels are, you should know how to dock and nest and move things around, you should know how to reset your workspace, and you should become slightly more comfortable with clicking around in Photoshop. I know that chapters 1 through 6 and really kind of 7 and 8 are mostly knowledge based, so, so it's a little painful getting through all of those chapters before we start to get to some really cool Photoshop stuff. Um, but slowly and steadily we'll become more comfortable so that when that time comes and we really jump in head first and start learning about Photoshop skills, you won't be spending most of your time figuring out where to go. Instead you'll be like, oh, this is really cool and I want to do this and I know exactly where to click because Jessica said to click on this panel or on this tools bar or different things like that. So I've got Photoshop open and I'm just going to open up the last image I had and that's the image that I was messing around with um, in Camera Raw for um, Chapter 4's lecture. And so uh, I'll open the Photoshop one. And so I've got the picture open and I haven't really talked any at all about the workspace. I've, I've purposely ignored that at this point because I knew this chapter was coming. But now I want to talk about where things are and why I would choose to look at things particular ways. And I'm really only going to scratch the surface of this. Read chapter 5. It will go into great detail. And chapter 5 and chapter 6 are, are, are two chapters that when you first read them, you're going to kind of skim through them and be like, yeah, yeah, that's great. But after you finish the class and you go back and reread them, they'll be really valuable to you because they'll make more sense. So the first thing that I want to look at is my workspace and I am looking at it on screen in the application frame and I want to expand it because on a Mac your your application frame is separated from from the top of your your screen and it gets a little confusing so I'm going to expand it. Uh, my main working area is in the middle and it's where my photograph is. On the left hand side is where you would see your tools panel and on the right hand side is where you would see any panels that might be open that are connected to your workspace. And there, I guess, are, are two really main approaches to workspaces. You can either choose a default and say, show me what's good, or you can create your own workspace. And what I would recommend is when you first get started, choose the default workspaces, find one that you like, and then stick to that. And as time progresses, you'll find out which panels you like and you don't like. I'm an undocker. I hate kind of coming all the way over here. If I'm working on layers, I kind of want my layers to be undocked and nested over here. Or it's not nested, it's floating over here. And so because of that, I will accidentally close out of these panels a lot and I'll have to reopen them. And so this lecture is going to be a combo workspaces and panels and presets lecture. So if you are watching this for chapter five, you don't have to rewatch it for chapter six. It's the same exact lecture. And so my workspace is what I see on the screen. If you go to the window menu, you can choose workspace and then there are a handful of default ones. So I've got photography here and it'll kind of open panels that you might use if you're a photography person. If you go back and choose painting, they should be completely different because if you're going to paint something, you're going to need brushes and colors and different things. Uh, if you choose essentials, which is the default, um, you'll see just random panels that you might need if you're learning Photoshop or if you're doing some basic manipulation. And what I would recommend is always choose your workspace and then choose reset. So the bottom half of that flyout menu will say reset. If you close out of a panel by accident and then you click on Essentials Workspace, it's not going to magically make them reappear. Like the Tools panel is missing, it's not over here. If I go to Window Workspace and then tell it to reset that Essentials Workspace, it will go back to the default. So if I close, let's say I don't want to use color, 
and I don't want to use adjustments, and I don't want to use paths. I could undock these, which means to pull them out of their little tab, and I could close out of them, and then I could say, that's how I want this workspace to be. I can go paint something, and then when I come back to essentials, it will say, okay, well, you deleted those tabs, so you didn't want to see them. If I want them back, you need to go to workspace and reset, or you can open up whatever panels you want. And so if I reset my, my essentials workspace, but I really want to see the info panel, which, um, just a side note, I actually really like the info panel. I use it all the time. If you hover over your artwork, it tells you information about it. It tells you what color you're on and different things like that. If you, if you click and do different things, the info panel can be helpful. You can also open up as many panels as you want or close panels, and you can figure out which panels you want open for whatever you're working on. So I'm just opening random panels now. Uh, when you have that and you go to workspace, um, you can create a new workspace. So say this kind of haphazard random stuff I have on the screen is what I really want to use and I want to save. If you go to window workspace and choose new workspace, you can save it. I can, whoops, oh, if I spelled my name right, Jessica's Awesome Workspace. And I can save it, and now that is my workspace. So if I go back to painting, and then I decide, oh, I don't like that workspace, I can go back, and now I can choose Jessica's Awesome Workspace, and it gives me kind of this hot mess that I created. Obviously, if you're going to create a custom workspace, you should make it so that it's functional. I've opened up the timeline, which is how you would edit video or create animated GIFs, in addition to paragraph styles and the info panel, just a random uh, sampling of panels. Uh, panels and presets is the next chapter, chapter six. And so I'm going to talk about some specifics of that in the next video.